Hey everybody, we're Open School, um, and our mission is uh, to try to radically uh, fix the problem of learning or not learning within education um, by mixing it with uh, programmable digital currency. Very professional term. Um, so for those of you who might not remember your education, you, you wiped it out like uh, Eternal Sunshine style. Uh, let me just give you an update on where we're at. Uh, it's exactly the same. Nothing is changing. Uh, so, it, which is actually kind of amazing because if you went back to 1980 and you were like, hey, we're going to spend trillions more in real dollars and you're going to have all knowledge in your hand. Um, and that will be true of almost every person. You would think like, oh my God, we're going to be amazing at education. And, but in fact, learning is just totally flat. Uh, structure of class is exactly the same. And the worst part is it's just as boring uh, as it's ever been. Um, so, you know, I, I don't say this as somebody blaming education. I mean, I've actually been doing my fair share of contributing to the lack of progress. Uh, I, I've spent 10 years, like, really working hard on education in the classroom, outside of the classroom, you know, raising money for ed tech, doing non-tech traditional stuff. And it's it's just extremely hard to move the needle. And you know, as a teacher, I care a lot about the students and I care a lot about imparting knowledge. And um, I think the humbling thing that you learn is that it doesn't matter how good of a teacher you are. And I think this is really, really important to understand. It doesn't matter how good of a teacher you are. You can make it very smooth, very interactive. Here's what matters. If the kid wants to learn, they will learn. If the kid does not want to learn, they will not learn. It, it, it's a humbling thing, but you know, I've found it to be true by running into this wall over and over again, right? We need students to want to pull learning out of us like they like they pull some gossip out of their friends or the like or how they pull, you know, the next level of the video game. They they have to want it. If they don't, we're gonna expend a ton of energy for very, very little uh, result. So if only there were something in the world that made people want to pull out of the world, right? If, if we could you know, use as much energy as the country of New Zealand to pull out some you know, piece of token of knowledge, right? If, if only this existed, right? And, and so this is the point, right? We, we want to, build education around incentives by bringing that power, that motivational power of cryptocurrency into uh, the learning situation, right, into the classroom. So here's how it works. Um, students mine OpenCoin through proof of learning, right? So what does that mean? For the student's perspective, it means you go home, you open up an app, almost like you're opening up a game, Right, you see if there's some questions to mine, you pick one and you just start answering, right? You start playing the game. Play it as much as you want, as little as you want, right? And it, it's up to you how you use it. But when you study, restudy, play and play again, you create mining power for yourself that then can result in actually earning the open coin. Um, take that coin, you know, hodl it, spend it in a marketplace, you know, get NFTs, get top shots buy trading cards, maybe in the future, use it for tuition, right? Use it, use it for, um, you know, a program in the summer, right? So after you graduate, right, maybe you cash out, right? Why, why should LeBron be the only one to make a you know, million dollars at age 18, right? It, so there's, there's tons of, of directions that the go, this could go for students. It's about creating that desire and a passion to get new knowledge that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Um, so the beauty of this is that all these questions are created on the other side because teachers, knowers, tutors, outside experts, they can mine open coin through proof of knowing. So what this is, is teachers can create a question, not only create one, but like categorize it. Um, say, you know, how, where does this fit? What things come after this? Uh, what do I need to know before cytoplasm? Okay, the nucleus, that's important. How important is it? All of these elements of a question they can um, bet on with their budget uh, of, of mine coin in, in a prediction market-esque way. 
And so the more that they are on the front end of a trend of a good question or a good categorization of a question, the more that they mine open coins. So the community in an intelligent prediction market esque sort of way will actually create this, not just questions for kids, but very cool thing, like a, a, a map, a dynamic map of knowledge. And this is very interesting because, you know, we, we might do something like this in a static way in a textbook, but we don't have a moving version of a map of knowledge saying how important it is each thing, what are the elements of it. Um, and also like, you know, if there's a topic like a new coding language, there's no way of fitting that new coding language into the knowledge that already exists. No, no easy way, no crowdsourced way. Um, so this map of knowledge is, is not just useful for the students, but I think is actually some socially useful uh, and very, very interesting technical element. Um, why this is really important for teachers is that teachers have no ability right now to increase their salary uh, based on the performance, right? Teachers are basically, they get a job and then they're paid for attendance. But we don't really want to incentivize teachers for attendance. That doesn't give them enough upward mobility for doing well at what they do, right? We want to motiv motivate them and incentivize them to perform. And so this allows teachers to actually meaningfully, potentially meaningfully um, uh, add to their, their salary when they're able to genuinely contribute uh, in a provable way to student learning. Um, this becomes really interesting when, so when you have a community of teachers and students, a community of learning, it, now that it's programmable, there's really interesting opportunities for outside institutions to get involved. So imagine that Google says, hey, like, I like incentivized education, but I want to incentivize kids to learn this new type of problem solving or al algorithm structure or coding language, right? So they can actually create a challenge block, stake coin to it, and kids can then try to solve that challenge, right? Or, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates will say like, well, I care about learning, but it's like more for philanthropic reasons. You know, I want kids in Africa to have more of a chance to earn a uh, coin than, you know, than others because they're behind and they're learning. Um, Harvard, maybe, you know, they, they start doing applications on here, right? So they're staking coin. This is interesting, not only to bring capital into the system, um, but the really cool thing about it is that it's the first thing that allows outside world to pull the curriculum out of uh, school instead of school making an arbitrary curriculum, not knowing really how it fits with the outside world and just sort of pushing it down to students. So this would be a very, very cool thing, much more interesting for kids as well for, than career services, for example, uh, which I, you know is basically worthless. Um, so uh, about how this fits into our weave, I really wanna talk about this because we've seen so much cool stuff today. Um, open, you know, our, the core to our mission is open. Um, so are we, first of all, obviously helps us solve the problem of censorship. And for those of you who aren't in education, like censorship is a really, really big issue in education. Um, everyone wants to control what information kids are going to have access to. So protecting openness of learning now, uh, through this permanent storage, uh, and in the future is, is really critical to our mission. Um, so storing our no ledger on our weeds huge and also really important is the is the sort of smart weave contract and decentralized elements So developers like developers should really be building the future of education. So much of learning now is digital um, That developers just like in the DAP layer of Ethereum can make interesting stuff and people pay them uh, in coin for that you know, you should be able to do this in education. If you want to create the new textbook, if you want to create like the new version of the lecture, if you want to just sort of create your study guides for some subject, you should be able to make that as what we call an ed app, uh, a decentralized application, but also contributions to the core protocol, uh, like in any blockchain would be really important for us. Um, the user acquisition model for us, it actually stems from the validation. So uh, one big problem is, is going to be you know, if, if there's money here, there's going to be a potential for fraud. So it, actually teachers are going to need to be val onboarding students uh, and to make sure that it's a real student using the app. And they're also going to need to uh, validate the student. So the student has to sign with a teacher to take the test. So we can kind of lean on the teacher for trusting um, the legitimacy of the answers. This fits into user acquisition because, you know, it. If, if a student needs a teacher to do this, 
then, and the teacher is also incentivized for bringing students on and onboarding, co-mining with students for doing it, then, you know, if one student says, I really want to do open coin, they go recruit their teacher. That teacher can easily bring 20 students. You know, they can bring in their whole class through that. Um, similarly, if you get one teacher, you can get those 20 students directly. So we have a nice model of sort of cross user acquisition uh, because of this validation relationship. So I think that's just sort of a, a lucky happenstance, but uh, very, very uh, interesting for user growth. Uh, in terms of our milestones, so, you know, we're in a proof of concept phase, but like this is happening. This is not, you know, a fantasy. This is going to happen. Um, teachers are already signed up to run A-B tests of open coin in their classroom. So half the class will have the chance to get extra credit for learning some new facts beyond what uh, they've studied so far. The other class can learn open coin. Um, half the class can use whatever study materials they usually use. Half the class can use our, our uh, knowledge map and app, right? So we're going to just see, like, does this radically uh, improve student outcomes? And, you know, I think it will. I, I think it has to. Um, we have to figure out how it works. But that's test number one to make sure that that works. Um, our goal is to uh, do public beta in uh, early September when school opens up. Uh, so the team, uh, our uh, tech lead will, will be announcing later they are tied up in uh, another venture, um, but we're already working a bit together. Um, I'm the education lead. All this beautiful, beautiful, awesome design uh, is John Pasifume who's out here. Um, and this last square, you know, we need people from out here to be part of this. Like we all have to build the future of, ed future of education together. Um, so, you know, this is open source, right? We're gonna depend on everybody uh, to contribute. and. You know, innovation comes from, you know, every direction and from unexpected places. So, like, my, my point to you is if, if you can imagine yourself being interested in any single part of what I just named, or you know other people who are, like, I want to talk to you about it. Um, we have to build this community from the ground up because I think it's going to take every one of us to do something this interesting and this important, but I absolutely think it can be done. Um, so thank you guys so much for the time, and I hope to talk uh, to many of you uh, here afterwards.